Hi folks, it's Mike here. Today I'm going to use multiple Q179 envelope generators in the sequencer mode to produce long sequences. I'll be using four Q179s today, but this technique will work with as few as two Q179s. Uh, the complete patch diagram for what I'm going to show you um, in this setup is available in the file area of the synthesizers.com Facebook page. So go there and you can get a much better look at this diagram. So I'll just walk you through the setup briefly here. Uh, if you don't get it, don't worry. Again, go to the file section. So it starts with a clock source. I'm using a uh, Q157 right here. I'm just using that square wave output at the top. I like it because it also has an off switch, which when I turn on, we'll make a sequence. Um, that clock feeds into the gate math, which is right next to it, to this input. I then take uh, the through output of that and go to other places. Uh, this also goes to a multiple because we use this clock in many, many places. The four outputs from the gate math actually go to the start input of the four Q179. So I'll go up and look at one of the Q179s right up here. And you can see the attack jack, which is also the start jack in sequencer mode on all four are getting their uh, inputs from the gate math. Uh, let's go back and just look at that Q179. They're all set the same way, so I'll show you one of them and then all the other ones are set the same way. Uh, from a switch point of view, this switch is set to time, which in sequencer mode means gate. This switch is all the way down in the delay position, which in sequencer mode means that it should do the sequence one time or once. It's in the speed fast mode. Obviously, it's in sequencer mode. And the last switch is up, which is the um, up pattern, which means it's going to step through four stages in a row and then stop. The gate input is coming from that clock source via a multiple. And the positive output is going off to a, a mixer. In this case, way over here, I'm using a Q112 uh, four channel mixer right here and you can see down here all four inputs from the four Q179s are coming into this and then they're going back out um, to a Q171 quantizer which I will explain why I'm using a quantizer on a signal that's already quantized. Um, the output of that quantizer comes back and this blue cable and eventually makes its way over to an oscillator which then goes through a uh, low-pass filter, amplifier, and then out to the sound system. That, that part of the patch isn't that critical. Uh, one other thing that happens here is um, the clock that goes to the quantizer is actually not the same clock as the Q157, but a delayed version of it. And the way I accomplish that delay is to send the clock off to two Q109 envelope generators. I made a separate video on this on my uh, uh, YouTube uh, page and I'm just using two Q1 lines in a row to create a delayed gate. I'll explain why I do that later but you need to have a delayed gate to run the quantizer. If you don't you'll have problems with the notes not being stable and I'll explain why that is. Alright so we're starting with the uh, Q179s all in the four step mode and the first thing I'll do is uh, set the divide ratio to four for all four outputs of the gate math. So here we have the gate math. I'm going to set the knob here to the 345, the switch in the middle position. I'll hit uh, fast here. And you'll see all four lights are blinking simultaneously. And you can hear that pattern, which is going from low to high, and it's clearly four steps. Um, first thing I want to show you is that one of the benefits of this setup is that you can run your four-step sequencer at less than four steps. Uh, to show that, that you can run less than four steps, I'll actually switch here to the divide by three mode. Um, turn this back on. And now you can hear that we have a three-step sequence. And just for exhaustion, I'll put, it, put them all to a two-step sequence. And now you have a two-step sequence. So the gate math divide ratio is determining how many steps each of the Q179s are taking. So I think that's a very interesting uh, benefit of this. 
So I'm going to set them all back to uh, three now. I go into this first position. And the next thing I want to show you is that by having all these outputs in parallel, what's happening here is this mixer is summing up the outputs of four sequencers. And when you run the sequencers a different number of steps, what will end up happening is you will get sequences of different lengths. Um, but uh, you can run sequences also longer than the four steps. So what I'll do is I'll set um, the sequencers all to five. And since these are four step sequencers, when you set the sequencer to five, it repeats the last step. So you can hear that happening. To make that even easier to hear, I'll set them all to seven. So now you have four steps and then three repeats. So you can set the divide ratio bigger than four and you will get a repeating sequence when you do that. All right, so I'll set everything back to the original four steps now. And now I'm just gonna change one of the Q179s via the gate math to um, divide by three. So I'll set the first one to divide by three. And as you can probably hear already, I now have a sequence that's longer than four steps. It's actually 12 steps. And the mathematics of this is the number of steps you will get is the least common multiple of whatever you have these divide ratios set to. So in this case, I have three of them set to four and one of them set to three. And the least common multiple of that is 12. So now I have a 12 step sequence. Now, interestingly, I set channel one to the uh, different number in this case, but if I set one of the other channels to a different number, I'll get a different sequence. So to show that, first let's set them all back to divide by four, so a four step sequence. And now I'll set the second output here to divide by three. Again, a 12 step sequence, but a different 12 step sequence. I'll set them all back to four again. And I'll set the fourth output to divide by three. And again, a 12 step sequence that's again different than the ones we've already heard. So what this technique is showing us is that it's the least common multiple of the divide ratios of the four channels that determines the step length and which output you set to the divide ratio does matter in that you'll get different sequences depending on what you do. Now I want to explain uh, this uh, transition area and why I use a quantizer here. So I'm going to turn the sequence back on and show you the oscilloscope. that's not just a clean line going straight up to the next step. That there's some breaks in that line, some quantization in that line. And below here on the second trace is actually the delayed gate, which is telling the quantizer when to quantize. So the reason I'm doing this, and I'll show you with an example, if I don't delay the gate, then the quantizer will not work very well. I'll show you what happens. go back to the four step here. So I'm back to my four step sequence. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the delay on the gate off by turning this knob on the envelope generator. Now this is a four step sequence that should just repeat the same four steps. But if I stop talking, what you'll hear is it's clearly not doing that. It almost sounds like it's making a random sequence. And the reason was that gate timing and the fact that uh, it's trying to quantize while the signal is still changing. So instead of getting four repeating notes like we should get, what we're getting instead sounds like a random collection of those four notes. Now if you don't have an oscilloscope, you can still use this technique and use your ears to make the adjustments. So I'll show you how you do that. 
you go to this first envelope generator, it's this attack time that determines the gate delay. And as I increase this attack time, eventually it'll just repeat the same four notes. So you can see right about there, now we're getting the four note sequence that we should be getting. If I increase it too far, it'll just stop triggering altogether. So somewhere between zero and two is where you'll find the right spot. And as you back it down, it'll start becoming non-repeating. So that's how you can use your ears to set that gate delay and get the quantization to work correctly. All right, so we've got everybody set on a four-step sequence right now. I'm gonna change the first output here to be a five-step sequence by going up to the gate math divide ratio, choosing divide by five, pressing the first button. Now the least common multiple of five and four happens to be 20. So now we have a 20-step sequence. And I've got the first channel set to five and all the other ones set to four. But for some real fun, let's set them all different. So I'll set the first one to divide by two, the second one to divide by three, the third one to divide by four, and the fourth one to divide by five. Oops. And the least common multiple of two, three, four, and five is a 60 step sequence. That's a six zero steps. Speed this up a little, maybe you can actually hear the pattern. It's a very long pattern, it's hard to hear a 60 step sequence and actually recognize the repeat. Now, the example I gave uh, on the Facebook page, I used all prime numbers because when you use prime numbers, the least common multiple is just simply the product of those numbers. So in the Facebook example, I used divide by 17, divide by 11, uh, I'm sorry, divide by 17, divide by 13, divide by 11, and divide by 7. And that gave you a 17,017 step sequence. So let me show you that, and you'll, of course, it'll, you won't be here long enough to hear it repeat, but, but divide by 17 on the first one, and you'll hear some repeated notes now. We'll go to divide by 13 on the second one. Divide by 11 on the third one. And finally divide by seven on the fourth one. And somebody else can do the calculation for, at this beat rate, how long it'll take to repeat 17,000 step sequences. But that's pretty much how it works. Now, by the way, this is with the uh, Q179 set to the um, four-step mode. You can set it to the six-step mode, too. I'll do that by just flipping the switches down here to the up-down pattern. Now, the fourth one over here. So now I'm using six steps on each of the Q179s and what turns out to be a 17,000-step sequence. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, you can use this technique with only two Q179s. Obviously, you can't get quite as long a sequence, but you can get some pretty long sequences by just using two Q179s in this configuration. Obviously, the more you have, the merrier. So that's how it works. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those questions or any comments you might have. And thanks for watching.